Henry, you've been talking a lot about companies as communities, kind of taking a different view than a lot of other management thinkers. What brought this focus on as corporations or firms as communities? Well, I, I, I think if, if I go back to the earliest work I did, there, that was always there, but not in that, in that sense. I, to me, I've always used companies as places where, where if they function effectively, people get engaged. They're part of it. They feel part of it. They feel they belong to it. Uh, they don't feel uh, this sense of out the door if we don't quite make our numbers on the stock exchange in the next quarter. Um, so I, I've always seen effective organizations as strong communities. I just didn't use the term. And then about, I don't know, 10 years ago, I started talking about what I call community ship, which is just uh, not a word in English, but it's like leadership. And I think we need to shift from too much emphasis on leadership to more emphasis on community ship. The idea of building companies where people feel they belong and, and when they do, people want to go to work feeling good. They want to go to work feeling they're doing something important and they want to go to work feeling respected. And when they do, they work much harder. You think that in North America particularly we focus on the CEO, the leader, too much and we're neglecting something in doing that? Yeah, you know, the United States in particular is absolutely obsessed with leadership. It's just, I, I think that the more the less leadership they get, the more they talk about leadership. It's this kind of stre it's this kind of yearning for somebody to come in and save us. Uh, and, and maybe that somebody is ourselves. Maybe the person who's going to save us is each of us together, not, in the, not independently, but together, people working together to do it. Sure, people respond to leadership, and sure, they like people who energize them. But, but essentially, you know, a lot of the charismatic leaders are just ordinary, not ordinary, but they're just likable people who we can relate to and therefore we energize ourselves. Do you think we take too much of a top-down approach when we look at things, particularly like changing an organization? Do we take too much of a top-down approach? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, there are lots of cases where a very good leader comes in and changes an organization or, or more likely creates an organization because entrepreneurial new firms, startups, entrepreneurial companies are typically created by very strong people who build teams around themselves and, and often very uh, uh, sort of self-centered in a way like a Steve Jobs. Uh, there's no question of that. But established organizations, good leaders of established organizations are often people who work in harmony with the culture, with the people there, and so on. And, and uh, let's face it, if an organization gets better, the chief executive might be a factor. The weather can be a factor. If you're an agricultural business and the weather's good, that could make all the difference too. Uh, competition can be a factor in the sense of your competitors getting better or getting worse. Uh, so there's all kinds of factors that drive organizations. Uh, leadership is one of them, but only one of them. There are a lot of others, and we've, we've so obsessed about leadership that we've downplayed the other factors like community ship. You know, if you look at one of the most popular uh, models of change, of transformation in organizations, it's from John Cotter, and there's a PowerPoint that shows it. And if you read down those points, establish a sense of urgency, forming a powerful uh, guiding coalition, creating a vision, communicating the vision, empowering others, and so on, it's all focused on the top. It's all focused on the leadership. 